So I've been using this custom 60% keyboard for a bit over a year now, and it has served me very, very well. Tons and tons of hours spent writing scripts, editing, and of course gaming. There's really no reason that I felt the need to upgrade from it at all. I would honestly say that building a custom keyboard has been one of the most useful and impactful things that I've done for my entire desk setup. Soon though, I will actually have two separate desk setups, one dedicated for gaming and streaming, and the other one for work and video editing. That way, I don't have to keep swapping monitors and setting up my camera and lights between the two, depending on which one I wanna kind of sit and do. Uh, and that way I can just kind of be a lot more efficient in my workflow. This also means though that I need two custom keyboards because there is no way that I'm going to use a generic gaming keyboard for either one of those. And so that's where this new keyboard comes in. Basically think of it as the same as this one, but just a little bit better. All right, so many of you will recognize that I've again gone with a Tofu 60% build from KBD fans. Personally, I'm a big fan of it, as you can tell. Uh, it's a board that's always available. I love how simple and minimal it is, and it's also one of the densest 60% layouts that you can get. You still have arrow keys as well as the left and right control keys, and if you need to configure things in the QMK configurator, that's really easy to do. A lot of people would be wondering why I wouldn't go for something a lot more premium and a lot more expensive, because I do have have the hookups, so to speak. Uh, but look, I don't consider myself a keyboard enthusiast and I also really dislike waiting for group buys. So for me, the Tofu 60% is pretty much perfect. And I guess one of the main upgrades that I've gone with here is the Hot Swap PCB. This keyboard build requires absolutely no soldering at all, which means that the assembly time does get cut down quite a bit. Of course, it also means that if I wanna try some different switches down the road, swapping these out will be super easy compared to desoldering every single individual switch switch, which I have done before and it is an absolute pain in the butt. Speaking of which, the switches that I've gone with here are the Gadron Black Inks, which, oh my god, that just sounds so, so nice. Uh, they're one of the nicer feeling linear switches that I've personally come across. My initial build here used the Telios V2, which are a lighter switch overall, 67 grams are bottoming out where I believe the Gadron are about 80 grams. So you do notice that difference. They do feel a little bit more solid and honestly, after lubing them as well, they do feel a little bit smoother too. So in terms of lubing, just a really light application of 205G0, just basically following the guide from Teha Types. So first a bit of a coating on the bottom housing, then the top and the bottom of the spring, and then a nice even coat around the stem. This only made a small improvement in the overall smoothness of the switch, seeing as these are a pretty smooth switch already out of the box, but it did help quite a bit in eliminating the pinginess of the springs. After lubing them, the springs are now super, super quiet. Now for the stabilizers, I went with the Diebook Stabs from KBD Fans. Didn't really know what I was getting myself into here, but overall, really, really pleased with the quality. The stabilizers don't actually need to be clipped like a lot of the other stabilizers out there. Typically, that's something that you need to do to eliminate the rattle, but that portion of the stabilizer here just doesn't exist. The wire that's being used here does seem a little bit stronger and more rigid compared to the generic cherry stabilizers that I've used in previous builds, so it does seem to clip in and just stay in place a little bit better. Better. In terms of modding these, all I really did here was add some dielectric grease along the wire where it sits inside the housing, as well as where it clips into the stabilizer itself. And of course, I did lube the stems too. I also added the KBD fan sticker foam to dampen the contact of the stabilizer stem against the PCB, so bottoming out the spacebar and backspace, for example, won't sound as harsh. So with these few mods, the backspace, enter, and shift key sound really, really solid. No rattle or ticking or anything like that. The spacebar, on the other hand, did require a lot more tuning, as it was a little unbalanced at first. But to fix this, I just did the Holy mod, which I'll link down below, and that just involves adding a bit of padding inside the stem where it connects to the wire, and that made everything feel super, super solid with no rattle or ticking at all.
These stabilizers also come in a bunch of different colors, which I think is pretty cool. So if you want to take your keyboard to the next level in terms of customization, that is a pretty cool option to have. For example, the black ones that I'm using here pretty much perfectly match the Gateron black inks. I've also used quite a bit of foam for this build to help dampen the sound and just make the board feel overall less hollow. So there's one layer between the brass plate and the PCB. There's then another layer between the PCB and the aluminum case. And I've also added a little bit of extra packing foam just to fill that void at the bottom. Now when I did my initial Tofu 60% keyboard build uh, over a year ago, this dense laser cut foam wasn't even an option. So I'm really glad it is now because I think it makes one of the biggest differences in the overall feel and sound of the keyboard compared to what we have here, which can sound a little bit metallic and hollow at times. Now for the keycaps, I will eventually be running the same blank keycap set from Enjoy PBT across both keyboards just for a bit of consistency. But unfortunately that set has been out of stock for a while now. So for the moment, I've just gone with a generic English and Japanese set in grey that I picked up from KBD fans for like $40. Does match the build overall pretty nicely, if I'm honest. Uh, they are Cherry Profile PBT with Die Sub Legends. Not sure if I will leave these on here. Probably will end up swapping to a blank set eventually. And the last thing that I did here were just a couple of adjustments to the default 60% layout in the QMK configurator. Most notably, relocating that Windows key from the left over to the right side because I always accidentally hit that in game. Otherwise, the layout is pretty much bone stock. I do like this layout quite a bit. I still have the physical arrow keys, of course, on the primary layer with the media keys on a separate layer. And then in terms of pricing, of course, around $350 US is what I spent to build either one. So about $700 in custom keyboards here, but you know, $350 for either one, that's kind of like low end to mid range. You know, custom keyboards are something that can get well into the thousands of dollars if you kind of pick the right parts and kind of wait around for the right parts. Uh, but yeah, $350 US, I think that is a pretty good deal for what you're getting. And it is nice to see how much this Tofu 60% has evolved over time. The new stabilizers, the new laser cut foam, that stuff does actually make a difference. So yeah, nothing too crazy, but still wanted to share this one for you guys who might find it helpful. And again, if you are on the fence of building your first custom mechanical keyboard, it is something that I can definitely recommend doing. The typing experience is so much better compared to your generic gaming brand keyboard. And with a hot swap PCB, the build process is honestly really quite easy. So if you are looking to maybe do something a little bit similar or learn more, or perhaps if you don't mind something just a little bit bigger than this, uh, there are a few other options that you might want to consider. So I will leave those links down below in the description. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.